All right. Okay. Let's turn our Bibles quickly. And this morning, I want to talk to you about experiencing phenomenal growth by pursuing spirit-inspired goals. Experiencing phenomenal growth by pursuing spirit-inspired goals. Experiencing, I mean, you can call them fundamentals of growth, but I believe that one of the things that the Spirit of God does in our lives, it helps us to really grow. Experiencing phenomenal growth by pursuing spirit-inspired goals. By pursuing spirit-inspired goals. One of the questions people ask me often is this. It's a brand new year. How can I make this year better? And the first thing I will say is this. The only way you can make the year better is by having clearly defined goals. Very clear. Some people have goals that are not clear. Some people have goals that are not, some people don't have goals at all. And most people that don't have goals did not start that way. Most people that don't have goals, they've been having goals before, but because their goals did not happen and they've gone through this heartbreak, what eventually happened to them is this. They just formed the habit of not setting goals at all. But if you want your year to be significantly different from what it used to be, then you must have clearly defined goals. Let, let, let me, if you don't have clearly defined goals, your year is going, to run by, is going to run by default. What is default? Let me use my phone. All of us that bought the iPhone, I think it's an iPhone 12. All of us that bought an iPhone, if you bought an iPhone and you just put in the scene, all the ringtones are the same. All the text messages are the same. All the last are the same. Because that is the default setting of the phone. There is a default of life. Even it can be influenced by location. So if you live in Nigeria, there is a default. This is how you are. You go this way. You go that way. You go this way. You go that way. It's a default setting. It's a default way of life. And the default is very powerful. Because without you knowing it, you're following a script. The same thing if you live in London, the same thing. That's a default. But, you know, if you, if you come to my, when I bought my phone, one of the things I did was this. I, I changed the default setting. You know why? I didn't want to respond to my phone the way other people respond to their phone because of my lifestyle. For example, every day between text messages, inbox messages, WhatsApp, and phone calls, I will get about 200 to 300, 200 messages every day. And so because of that, my phone is permanently on silent. I, my phone never rings. It never rings. And what that does for me is that because of my schedule, I have to customize my phone to be able to achieve my purpose. So my phone doesn't ring because I don't want... Just imagine phone ringing 200 times. I, you know, I, I'm, you would just... It's just be something else. You can't do any other thing apart from picking or responding to the phone. So what I'm saying to you is that a lot of people... Instead of them to have a designer's life, they are living by default. So, everybody's moving to Canada, I move to Canada. Everybody, and you must know that life, life and destiny is very personal. Are you listening to me? I mean, after the first service, I met a lady, and the lady said, I, I, I relocated from Canada, I moved to Nigeria. And, and when she said that, he said, everybody thinks I'm crazy, but this is the best thing for me to do. He said, I got a fantastic job. And when she said so, I was just laughing, because, because while everybody seems to be moving to the other side, she's moving way back. And someone says, she's crazy. It's not craziness. It's the fact that you must realize that though it works for your friend, it, does not, it doesn't have to work for you. Life is very personal. Destiny is very personal. Some people, the best thing you would do this year is to leave your job and get into a business. Some people, the best thing you would do this year is to stay in your job. Some people, you're of the same age, but you should not be thinking of marriage. Some people, you're better be thinking of marriage. It's a very personal thing. So the reason why people are stuck in life is that they don't have very clear goals. The question is this, do you have clear goals? Do you have goals when it comes to your finances? Or because you've not accomplished your goals several times, now you're, you're, you feel down? And you say, I've set goals before. I don't want to set goals again. I want to ask you something. When you were planning to work and you fell many times, did you stop, planning to, did you stop learning to work? You got up and kept learning to work until now you can work. Listen to me. If because you're falling a lot of times, you stop setting goals, then you'll go nowhere. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. 
Saul says, okay. So he's actually said, go. So, so explain to me, pastor, why I'm stuck. The same thing. So sometimes people are stuck because they have no goals. So their life is by default. In fact, the way some people measure success is that they look at their neighbor, their brother, their sister, and they say, that's my level of success. But our race is not is different. The way life is, life is a marathon, not a relay. Some people are going to start early. Some are going to start late. And when you have a goal, someone says, okay, okay, well, I have a goal. What next do I do? So when you have a goal, the next thing you really, really want to do is very simple. Okay, I was just looking. I saw something on the back. Let's see. Looking at it. When you really have a goal, I really believe that the way to make your goal stick is by thinking of your why. Because when the goal doesn't have purpose, the goal will soon be forgotten or fail with time. What does purpose do for your goal? When it becomes so tough to go forward, you remember the why. And that's what is missing from a lot of people's goals. There is no why. So, I want to make 50 million. Why? There is no why. Uh, you know, the other day I was preaching, I was preaching at our Abuja church, and the lady said, Pastor, I want to get married. How can I get married next year? And I said, that's a great idea. That's a good goal. And I said, why do you want to get married? It's like, because, because I want children. He said, I'm growing old. I want children. He said, because also, um, I just want someone that can be there for me to talk to. And I asked her, this is amazing. Isn't it amazing that all your wife for your goal is just so selfish is on yourself? I said, your wife is not strong enough. Faith walks by love. If your why is going to be strong, your goal must bless people other, apart from you. So you're saying to yourself the reason. So you're saying to yourself the reason why I want to get the job is that I want to be able to, in my spare time, this job that pays a lot, but I work short hours. In my spare time, I want to mentor children that have no parents or on the street to become successful. That is a very powerful goal, backed up with a very powerful why. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. That's very significant to all of us. So, so you, you need to have a why. You need to have a why. And when you have a why, you need to have a map. And say, how do I get from here to there? Because you are here today. Your goal is somewhere in the future. How do I get from here to there? So let's look at the Bible. Let's just, let, let's just dig into this today as we look at this. This is very powerful today. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Let's look at John chapter 15 in verse 16. John chapter 15 in verse 16. Look, look at what the Bible says. And, and just talking about goals and growth and goals and growth. And because you need to know that growth is not just what you're thinking about. So you, you need to grow. You need to grow. I thank God that your business is doing what boy can do better. You need to grow. Thank God that you're making this 5 million euro income every year. But it can move to 10 million. Thank God for the business that is doing the first 100 million, but it can move to 250 million. Thank God for how you've gone spiritually, but there's a bigger thing you can go. Thank God for how much you can pray, but you can still go farther. You can grow. See what the Bible says in the message version. James, sorry, John chapter 15 and verse 16. He says, you did not choose me. Remember, I chose you and put you in this world to bear fruit. No wonder we get frustrated when we have no goals. The reason, the reason why he says we are designed by God to bear fruits. He says, as fruit bearers, oh, glory to God. That's so quiet here this morning. Glory to God. Look at the name God called us. You know, some people call you stupid and you bother about that. God looked at you. He said, you're a fruit bearer. Ha, <laughs> Hey, he doesn't matter what I do. I bear fruits. He says, I am what? A fruit. Somebody say, I am a fruit bearer. Those online, write in the comment section. I am a fruit bearer. He says, as a fruit bearer, whatsoever you ask the Father in relation to me, he will give to you. I am a fruit bearer. If I start a business, it's going to bear fruit. If I, if, if I, if I run some investment, it's going to bear fruit. I'm not a loss bearer. I am what? A fruit bearer. Someone say, I'm a fruit bearer. Say, in the name of Jesus, this year I bear fruits. Phenomenal fruits. So, you see, God wants us to grow. God wants us to bear fruit. And intentional growth is impossible without goals. You're not going to be able to grow spiritually if you're not intentional about it. Like, like this year, to grow spiritually, I had to, I signed up for a Bible reading plan. 
Because I know that if I read my Bible sporadically, I will not get done anywhere. I had to, I had to reorganize and say, okay, just based on this, this is I'm going to do this. Because I have spiritual goals. In t- you cannot grow intentionally with our goals. And for those, and if the, the same thing. I, I had a friend some time ago. This guy was a senior person in the bank. And he, he lived a very slim life financially. And I wondered, you're huge in the blank. Why? Why do you drive such an old car? You can afford luxurious car. You can have a much luxury. And he explained to me, he said, Pastor, I live on 30% of my income. I said, why? He said, I'm trying to buy a bank license. He said, yeah. He said, 10% I give to the Lord, 20% me and the family use it. He said, I tried, I'm trying to buy a bank license. When I buy the bank license and we move, all the, that is what intentional living looks like. You are not doing what other people are doing. You are doing what fits your destiny. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. There are many things we will do as a church. And people say, but they don't do that in the other church. But we're not like the other church. This is a different design. God showed us something different. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I love what someone said. If you aim at nothing, you will get nothing. If you aim at nothing, you will get what you aim at. Which is what? Nothing. Question, what are you aiming at this year? Some of you, oh, 2022, hey, it's my year. Year of what? Jesus told Abraham, he said, as far as your eyes can see, he said, I will give to you. So, what you don't see, God does not give to you. What can you see? I know you work in First Bank. Can you see the MD office? Can you see that you can be on that table? Can you see the position of director? Can you see you can be on that table? Can you see your marriage? Can you see you can be on that table? How far can you see? And because we live in this kind of country where success seems scarce, There's a tendency as a people to always think success is difficult because we don't have many significant success stories except stories that are successful but unexplainable. And because of that, you can have the challenge of not having, you can have the challenge of not dreaming or setting goals. Why does the Spirit of God lead us to set goals? (laughs) Why does the Spirit of God lead us to set goals? Number one, because goals are expressions of our faith. Why does the Spirit of God lead us? Goals, I said this, goals are our faith talk. Why does the Spirit of God lead us to set goals? Because goals are our faith talk. Let me explain what that means. Two scriptures. The Bible says, be unto you according to your faith. Meaning what you will have is what you fated for. Goals are the expression of my my faith. The woman, this is the thing. The woman with the issue of blood, she had not even seen Jesus. The Bible says she said to herself, if I may touch the helm of his garment, I shall be made what? Whole. She had not even seen him. She had not even touched him. But there was something she believed. The question is that, what is the expression of your faith? Listen to me. For someone under the sound of my voice, the expression of your faith is that, this year is the year I get pregnant. Praise God. This year is the year I get married. Praise God. This year is the year I do the first one million dollars. Praise God. Hey, people think you're crazy. You can say all you can. When the woman with the issue of blood was talking, every body thought she was crazy but she kept on talking and until those that laughed at her began to laugh with her can I prophesy to you someone today those that laugh at you will laugh with you I said those that have laughed at your dreams will laugh with you in the name of Jesus this is so significant this is so significant why does God lead us to set goal because goals are expression of our faith Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now, faith is a substance of things one hope for. Where there is no goal, faith cannot work. Where there is no hope or goal, faith cannot work. What is it like? Faith is the power of God. It's like electricity. If you have electricity in your house and you don't have television, you cannot say that, um, I don't watch TV. No. The reason why I don't watch TV is not because there's no power. It's because there's no elect, it's not because there's no television. There's power to power TV. 
There's power to power your business. There's power to power your needs. But what you need is the goal for it to happen. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Question, do you have a faith talk? Do you have a faith talk? This year, this year I do the first hundred million now. I, I can't even hear some. This year I do the first hundred million now. This year I move into my house. This year I get pregnant. This year I get engaged. Don't just say amen. I want you to say what your own faith talk is. This year I get the approval on the contract. Hallelujah. This year I get the document. Praise God. This year I get the visa. Praise God. This year I get the marriage. Praise God. This year I get the ring on my fourth finger. Praise God. This year, this is the year I cross the one billion dollar mark in my business. I cross the one billion dollar mark in my business. I cross the 10 million dollar mark in my business. This is the year I move from tenant to landlord. This is the year where I break up the masturbation. Oh yeah. This is the year I break up the malice. I break up the unforgiveness. This is the year I break up the lethargy. I break up the sin. This is the year. Why is this important? This is what God does. <laughs> God is wise. God uses faith to stretch. God uses our goals rather to stretch our faith. You want to, someone says, you want to grow your faith. Someone says, give me faith. God will give you a goal. Because it will use your goal to stretch your faith. If your faith is going to grow, it's going to go in response to problems. Can you give me my tea bag? <laughs> oh, glory to God. You know what I love about tea? It's one of the things I do every day. This is a tea bag. Will you give me maybe a cup of water? Is there water there? Just a glass. Just a glass, not a mug. If I put this tea bag in a normal glass of water, what will happen to it? Will he? You want to see? Let, let's see. I'm just a glass of water. Just give me a glass. Thank you. So if I pull this tea here, stay here. Is this tea? No. It has not what? Huh? It has not diffused. I, I love the way my hands say it has not tall. <laughs> That's what my hands say. Is it, is, it, is it the water is not hot? Is it the tea has not tall? The tea has not diffused. You know why? Because room temperature water does not diffuse tea. What diffuses tea is hot water. That's why when you go through pressure, what, was, what you thought was meant to kill you was meant to expand you. Oh my God. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> when they tell you that what you now need is a hundred million naira, you say, yay, uh -uh. you will say, it's not meant to kill me, it's meant to expand me. When the government say, we are cancelling this small contract and only big contracts are available, and you look at your capacity, you say, wow, this is not meant to kill me, it is meant to, what well, expand me. Glory to God. That's what Joseph understood. When Joseph went through fire, they said, you thought this would destroy me. What you thought would destroy me was meant to expand me. When David saw Goliath, he said, you thought this would destroy me. But what you meant to destroy me, he's meant to what? Expand me. Are you sure you are not running away from what is meant to what? Expand you because you are thinking he's meant to destroy you. Glory to God. God will put in some goals in your heart. He will say, open an office in Abuja. He said, eh? God will say, open a new office in London. Eh? Open a new office in New York. In Manhattan. You say, hey! But what that is not meant to destroy you. It's meant to expand you. 
You've been dating that girl for three years now. And God says, put a ring there. Say, I'm still not sure. And God says, I said, do it. I say, I just want to be careful. I'm just watching my time. And God said, for three years, just know she's also my daughter. And you're shaking. And you think it's going to kill you. But what you thought was meant to kill you is meant to expand you. Oh, somebody put your hands together for the Lord. Glory to God. When we say it's time to fast and pray, someone says, I'm going to die. You're not going to die. What you thought was meant to keep you is going to expand you. Because sometimes expansion looks like that. Glory to God. Let's read what the Bible says. <laughs> so what does God do? So when God wants to grow you, he throws goals at you. He throws goals at you. Why are you running away from the goals that's meant to grow you? Why are you running away from the goals that are meant to grow you? Why are you running away from the goals that are meant to grow you? Many of you are saying, Lord, grow me. God said, that's good. It gives you a goal. And you think you're the one thinking it up, but it's not you thinking it up. It's God putting the goal there and saying, Manhattan office, Manhattan office, Manhattan office, Manhattan office, Manhattan office. I, re I remember we're trying to start the Abuja church and we'd planned this maybe two years ago and for some reason we could not start and I was dragging my foot. I was wondering what's going on. Then yes, last year the vision came back and God said start the church. I said, what's going on? And just kind of struggling, you know. And there's a way you procrastinate not because there are not things there. You procrastinate because of fear. Oh, I mean, I know what I'm talking about. When you procrastinate because of fear, you find good reasons. To say, um, the reason why we're postponing is because of this and this. And you know deep down that you're afraid. And God told me, he said, he said no matter what you do, that church starts this year. He told me that in November. Hi. So, I had a decision. Either to obey or disobey. So, I put it together. I said, okay, we'll do it. And, I made up, and let me tell you how I solved it. Because what was the major fear? It may not turn out the way I wanted. But I told myself, success is not the result of what I want. It's doing what God wants. I said, once I settle that, let's start the church. And the Lord blew our mind. First Sunday service, auditorium packed. We had an overflow. 1,500 people in the first service. Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me, somebody? God is talking to you about forgiveness. And you say, I can never forgive him. I can never forgive her. Do you know what is on the other side of your obedience? God is talking to you about tithing. Say, I'm struggling so much. Do you know what is on the other side of your obedience? God is talking to you about service. And you say, I don't have the time. Do you know what is on the other side? Do you know the thing? The only reason I can share the testimony today was because I took a step of faith. Until you take a step of faith, you can't see the testimony. So how does God grow us? God grows us with goals. Look at what Ephesians 3.20 says. Let's go ahead and read it. So God stretches our faith with goals. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Look at what the message Bible says. I love this. It says, God can do anything you know. Far more than you could ever imagine. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Um, Pastor Fuji, can you help me out? The, yeah, thank you. Yeah. He says... Ephesians 3 verse 20, the message translation. It says, God can do anything you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess, or request in your wildest dreams. I want to notice it. He says, he says, if you think you're a big dreamer, God says, I can top it. My God. Some of you think, I'm a big dreamer. God says, bring the dream to me. I can top it. He says, I can do more than what you can ask in your, this is this should encourage you to dream. He says this. So how do I do it? See what the Bible says. He does not do it by pushing us around. How does he do it? But by walking in us, a spirit deeply and gently within us. This is what I like the most. He says, "How does God do this?" He says, "It walks in us quietly." So he says, mm, "Why not buy the house?" in the banana and, you're saying, and sometimes you don't even know he has spoken 
because he's working on us deeply and gently. This is why, why do many Christians miss God? Because he's so gentle, it's easy to ignore. And God says to you and says, this is the year of you will get married. And he goes, I, I wish if it's like that, I will pray. And you don't know. He says, this, God is saying, I'm able to top what you can ask or think beyond your wildest imagination. And I'm not forcing it on you. He says, I'm working what? Deeply within you. Let me say something to you here. Everybody look at me. Very often, a lot of Christians don't know what to do. And the truth is this. Direction for a child of God is not on the outside. Direction for the child of God is on the inside. When you don't know what to do, all you have to do is to look inward. Where's my iPad? Just come with it. Every iPad I sold, when you open it, every iPad that you sold comes with a manual. Are you here, somebody? Every iPad I sold comes with what? Comes with the manual. This is the manual of the iPad. The manual is inside the iPad, not outside the iPad. Every Christian, the manual of your life is in your spirit. The manual of your life is where? In your spirit. Once you have trouble with the iPad, go back to the manual. That's why the Bible says it leads us from inside. I'm telling you. Someone says, how do I know when it's time to start a company? Just go back to the manual. Bring it back and read it. How do I know when to get married? The manual is inside. The reason why is that the direction you're looking for the outside is really on the inside. So why you don't find it is this. When you keep looking in the wrong place, you don't find the right thing. Thank you, sir. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So God uses goals to stretch our faith. Some of you need to set goals. I love what Creflo said. Creflo said he had a challenge and he asked him what will he do. He said, this looks like a job for El Shaddai. You need to set goals that when they say, how will it happen? You know that this is a job for El Shaddai. Man cannot do this. What's the difference between goals and, goals and dreams or wishes? The difference between a wish and a goal is deadline. When I have a goal, I have deadline. So, I'm not saying it will happen one day. I'm saying it will happen by March. Uh -huh. When you have faith, put a date on it. Yeah. Praise God. When you have faith, put a date on it. I said, when you have faith, do what? Put a date on it. Let me ask you a question this morning. Does the size of your goal reflect the size of your God? Does the size of your goal reflect the size of your God or the size of your goal reflects the size of your past of your resources of who you know of what you can do why are you setting this goal ah, this is all I can do I said God use this goal see you need to use God that will drive you to pray because you know Lord if you don't help me I can't help myself those are the kind of people come God to. When the woman that was bleeding told, told herself, if I may touch the helm of this garment, I shall be made whole. What you must know is this. A woman that has that medical condition in Israel, if she's found outside isolation, they will stone her to death. What she was saying that if I don't get healed, I will be killed. It says the only way out of this is that I get healed. The second thing goals does is this, and this is very powerful. Why does God challenge us to set goals? God uses goals to build us. You know, as much as achieving goals is very beautiful, you know what God is interested? God is more interested not in the goals you achieve, but guess what? God is interested in what you become while achieving that goal. Ah, uh, but I did. Let it sink. Let it soak. I don't know what you're hearing me. God is not just interested in the goals you achieve. God is interested in who you become while you are pursuing that goal. I, I know you. This was you. I know you, lady. You used to spend hours watching Z Channel, African movie Auburn, African movie Nigeria, African movie Family. You knew all the African movie. Then you moved to the other food channel. You would spend hours and hours and hours and hours. But all of a sudden, 
when they told you that one fallopian tube was blocked, you forgot about African magic. You knew all the good restaurants. You forgot about all the restaurants. Oh, all your friends, you left your friend chatting. Your friends are asking you, how come we don't see your hangout again? The reason why is that the goal is changing me. The goal of having a child. The goal of getting pregnant. See, I want a child, but what is happening is this. The goal is making a prayer warrior out of me. Praise God. So, why all my friends are sitting down working Z Magic and say, Shanet, Shanita, oh, Tendoni, Tendoni, Tondon, Tondon, Tondoni, 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 Tondon, Tondon, Tondon. No, 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 I'm not doing that. I'm getting to the world. Shalamba Kora Shagadia Extikara Tiagada Sombeke Shagilege Savaliga Sandada. And they are wondering what is wrong with you. The reason why the goal is changing me. Somebody said, God is building me. Somebody shout hallelujah. There's something I told you. Can, can I, will you receive this? Hey, when you are working on your goal, God is busy working on you. <laughs> when you are what? so this is you. They told you this year, for, for your position as a senior manager, you need to bring in 350 million. You say, Mobile. Hey, you, you, you say, Chi-ay! Hi, Chiamaka. Hi, what will I find 350? But what that does to you is this. All of a sudden, you remember that you have a God that cannot fail. You remember that with God, all things are possible. You remember that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Listen to me. Your goal has a way to push you to God. That's why some people think God caused their problem. No. God did not cause your problem, but God used your problem. There's a difference between cause and use. Cause is that I'm the root of your problem. Use is that now that your problem is there, it's a factor we can use to get your attention. And what God in the, God does in the process is that, you know, when your marriage is so nice, you don't have time. When life is so good, you don't have time. But now you have the goal. You've heard what the doctor said. You have this marital goal. You have this financial goal. I thought you couldn't, you didn't know, to, you, didn't know you, you couldn't fast. Now you can fast. Ah, you can fast. Because it's that goal you have. Because God uses our goal to build us. The question is this. Are you running away from what should build you? You know how some people have, this is very powerful. See, see, goal. And you know why? Why some people run away when God wants to build them? Because goal is always in what? The discomfort zone. You never grow in comfort zone. You grow out of discomfort. So, when you see people that are playing football, where's my football partner? Come. When you see people that are playing football, let me show you. You don't score in your own net. You score against what? Opposition. So, people stay over there. Stay. People that are playing defense never score. Are you playing defense or attack? What is defense? <laughs> defense is that let's maintain the income. Let's maintain what we were last year. Let's maintain. You can't go forward that way. You can't go forward. If you're going to score goal, you're going to be what? On the attack side. But the problem about the attacking side is this. When you have the ball and you're going with the ball, this is not AFCON. This life come. Praise God. This life come. This is not AFCON. Hallelujah. When you're going with the ball, you think it's going to be smooth. But right in front of you there's another defender. And this person this is funding. He says you can't move your business forward. And funding have come to keep you stranded. And you try to go. He will block you. You try to go. But you go. Hey! And you you're passing again. And you're, you're passing again. Then you meet another obstacle. Go. go policy hallelujah and you look at problem policy he seems he's even putting his hands down trying to match you and you're wondering what will i do to this one and you can see the gap in between his legs this is going to be a toro hey pop the ball has gone outside hallelujah and you pass the ball uh, and yet there's another obstacle this is doctor's report uh, and this one is very serious he's marking with the back the doctors are giving their report uh, they say based on this you are going to die they say based on this you can't have a baby based on this your child cannot walk and you look at it and you say how will I do this one and this one you need the hand of Jehovah why they are still marking your feet you enter the fifth dimension you head the ball over hey! they didn't see it coming but God made it happen they didn't see it coming but God made it happen somebody shout amen
Wow. Uh, I'm not like some people. Come back, sir. I'm not like some people. Once they face the first attack out defender, and they say block, and they block, they go back again. They go back. They say maybe marriage is not for me. Have you ever people said that dumb thing before? Just because they went through one heartbreak or the other, because of one delay or the other, they say maybe marriage is not for me. Maybe because uh, they lost the pregnancy. Maybe God doesn't want to give me the baby. I don't know why things. They now conclude that things are not working for me. Listen to what he told you. He didn't say there will be no battles. He only said you will overcome all battles. Listen to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Faith does not make life simple. It just makes it overcomable. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when you go through it, you tell yourself, we are not of them that go back. We don't retreat. We don't give up. We stay there. We die here. We die here. We move. We move. Somebody say amen. This year, we This year, we This year, we Ah, pastor, I've lost all the money in crypto. Don't worry. <laughs> That's lost right there. We are not going to run away. No, sir. We stay here. We move. Someone say, pastor, my business is gone. We don't give up. We won't move. Praise God. God built character. Thank you, Pastor. God uses goals. See, what I love about goals is this. You know, many of you just talking here, do anything. Do. When you have goals, God will be begin to use the goals to build your character, to build your discipline. What you didn't know you could do, you begin to do it for your goals. And this is amazing. While you are work, this is some, this is the most beneficial thing about goals, and this is how God uses goals to change our lives. How does He do that? While you are working on your goals, God is working on you. Joseph was perfecting the act of getting to the palace. God says, "While you are doing your goal, let me be doing you." God was teaching Joseph how to talk. How to care for people. How to deal with the multiracial culture. He was teaching him all those things. The question is this. Do you realize that God is working on you as you're working on your goals? Because if you don't realize that God is working on you, lessons will be lost. Let's read the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in verse 29. Chapter, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 25. I'm reading the Passion Translation. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 25. A true athlete will be disciplined in every respect. Practicing self-control in order to win a laurel wreath that quickly withers. But we run a race to win a victor's crown that will last forever. See what it says. For this reason, I don't just run for exercise. <laughs> he says, do, neither do I box like one throwing aimless punches. Rather, I train like a champion athlete. Doing what? I subdue my body. This is how the goal is changing me. There was a time I could eat whenever I could eat. There was a time when they said there's fasting and prayer. I just said I'm not fasting. But now that I see what is happening, the goal that God has given me in politics, the goal that God has given me in business, even when I wake up in the morning and I feel hungry, I said, hunger? No. It's 21 days of fasting and prayer. I look at wine presses coming and I'm saying that but there's work and there's that. I say, I saw all those things. I'm not watching online. I'm watching life. It's easy to watch online, but as an athlete, I subdue my flesh. I train like what? A champion athlete. I'm not looking for what is easy. I'm looking for what will deliver. And I'm saying this is it. And now is it. And this is the moment. It may not be convenient, but I understand God is using my goal to build me. Question. I know your marriage is struggling. 
and you want marriage to success, do you know that marriage to success goal? God is using it to build you. I know you want to become the MD of your office and there are challenges. Do you realize God is using it to build you? Are you staying and fixing it or you're looking for a way out? Look at what Paul said. Paul said this. He said, I don't throw aimless punches. I train like a champion athlete. I subdue my body and get it under control. That's what the goal does to you. I know that some of you have not been fasting. That's too bad. You have to take your appetite and whip it. Glory to God. My appetite will not destroy my destiny. I will not eat my destiny like Esau. Huh? My God, if I have to do it, we will food to press it. Let's press it. If I have to be on site, let's press it. Because there's something I must do. My God, this is the season of fasting and prayer. I know my flesh doesn't want to fast. But Paul said, I will subdue the flesh. I will flog it until it enters the coma. Praise God. Uh, so what, what, in this season, what, how is God building us? By putting goals in your heart. So he puts a marital goal there. And he puts a marital goal. As you're pursuing the marriage, he begins to tell you, fix your mouth. Fix your attitude. Fix your stinginess. Stingy men. Fix your stinginess. Because I know you want to marry. God says, but I want you. You want something, but he wants you. So he begins to work on you. And he tells the men, fix your stinginess. And some of you men are in business. You have this goal. Nobody in your family has done this before. And you want to do it. And God is saying that that's the goal. And God needs to deal with your fear. Because you're comfortable when transactions are 10, 20, 50 million. But the moment transactions get to 550, 650, 2.2 million dollars, you begin to develop code faith. And God says, for you to get there while you're pursuing your goals, we have to kick off the fear. And some people are careless, not good in organizing, in administrating, in keeping records, in communication. And God says, huh, in pursuing that goal, I have to work on you. And how do you allow God to work on you? By releasing yourself to him. Let's start with fasting and prayer. In this world of fasting and prayer, before you ask for anything, walk in me. Before you ask for anything, Father, walk in me. Walk on me. Take me as your personal projects. Ah, take me as your personal projects. Let's close with the scripture. First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. Chapter 2, verse 9. This is what the Bible says. It says, But as it is written, eyes has not seen nor ear heard, neither has he entered the heart of man the things, watch this now, the things that what? Come on, people. Can God use your mouth this morning? Yes, Let him use your mouth. The things that what? Can you... It's on the screen, okay. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. If it's on the screen, you look into the Bible. I believe you have one. All right. It says, At his written, eyes have not seen nor ear heard, neither has he what entered to the atom. The what? The what? What are things? Marriage is a thing, promotion is a thing, job is a thing. It said, Those things God has prepared. The reason I'm saying so, because I'm saying that. Why do you need to let the Spirit of God guide you in goals? There's a reason why. Because the Spirit of God can guide you to prepared places. It's one thing to think of what you want to do by yourself. It's another thing to step into what God has done. He said, the things that God has prepared for them that love me. And see what the Bible says. And God has what? Revealed them to us by His Spirit. This is powerful. Oh, Mokoro no Mondo. Where's my computer again? Being the iPad. This, see, see, see. The Bible says, before I was born, God, watch this now. He didn't say he's going to prepare things. This is what I wish every woman looking for a child would know. God did not say, I'm going to give you a child. He said, the things he has prepared 
before you even got married, he knew you would have a child, you, you want a child, and he prepared for you to have a child, even though the doctor said your fallopian tube was blocked. He prepared, even despite their report, even though they said your womb was blocked, he prepared despite their report. I wish you would know this businessman that needs 280 million for the next transaction and you're wondering where will I get it from? Before that transaction came up, he says he prepared for it. God is not accidental. God is orchestrational. Well, see what the Bible says. He prepared him for that. And God has what? Review. Well, this is what review means. Don't open yet. Review means God prepares it. But you cannot see it. Listen, your spirit knows through the word that God has done it. So, what does it reveal it to? See, your spirit knows that God has done it. What does it reveal it to? It's my mind that cannot see it. That's why throughout the Bible, God is always praying that your eyes of your understanding, your mind. That your eyes of your understanding, your mind. That your eyes of your understanding, your mind. The reason why you're struggling is that though in the spirit, the reality, your mind cannot see. So, God, see, revelation is uncovering to the mind. It's not the spirit discovering something new. It's the mind discovering what the spirit already knows and has inside. So, this is revelation. This, it's covered it's covered. It's covered. Revelation is. Oh. Let me give you what revelation is. Pastor Lika, can you just, just do your French? Can you do your French? Can you just speak French? Little, get, get the microphone. Thank you. This is what revelation is. Just come and be greeting me in French. And be telling me, Pastor, I love you. And just all those nice things. Tell me about your husband. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour, Pasteur. Uh, uh -huh. uh, je vous, uh, je t'aime. Uh -huh. Et mon, mon marié uh -huh. est là-bas. Uh -huh. Il est. Can you just show the dwarf view just from the from the from the main camera? So Il est un bon homme. Uh -huh. Il est un. Um... Uh -huh. <laughs> Question. <laughs> Who understand what she's saying? If you do, you do. I can see somebody that understand French here. Yeah. Question. Is she saying the right thing? Yes or no? Yes. Well, can you understand it? Because your mind cannot catch higher frequency. That's another frequency. So your mind is not true for that frequency. This is what fasting and prayer does. Fasting and prayer steps down the frequency. And say what the spirit is trying to say. Let's step it down. So that your mind can capture. So I call. Who, who understands now? That guy that understands. Come, come, brother. Brother, come, come, come. Come. So your mind does this. This is very powerful. This is what the Spirit of God does when we fast and pray. Keep speaking. Keep this speaking. Bonjour, um, bonjour. <coughs> bonjour, monsieur. Uh -huh. um, comment ça va? Uh -huh. ça va um, mon, mon mari um, est là-bas. God is doing Il, all this. Please come over here on, on, on my right hand side. Give me the microphone. <laughs> Il ne parle pas français, ah. mais ah. Um, il parle beaucoup anglais. Listen, God is saying all of this to me. God is telling me that your marriage is settled. You will have the child. God is telling me all the things he's done. But I can't get it. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, when I, my spirit speaks in the spirit in tongues, but my understanding is unfruitful. So this is what fasting and prayer does. It's a step down. Come over here. Fasting and prayer gives us opportunity. Start speaking, man. Bonjour, monsieur. Uh -huh. um, ça, um, ça, ça c'est mar mon mari. Um, il, il ne peut pas uh, français, Good, mais fine. il parle Tell me what beaucoup she's anglais. Yeah. Put on the microphone. She, she's talking about like um, I am uh, um, like she's talking about herself like I am introducing herself. I'm this and uh, that's my husband. That's my husband. That's fantastic. That's Listen to me. Whatever the Spirit of God is saying to you will not make a difference until your mind can get it. This is what fasting and prayer does. We subdue the flesh so that our mind can pick up the deep signals. When you pick up signals, everything changes. Listen to me. This next 14 days after we fast, as we come for wine press, you need to pick up signals because signals will change your lives. Let's pray. Thank you. Praise God. Stand on your feet. Let's pray.